we we're talking about solving radical equations using factoring. Uh, factoring in applications lesson number seven. Now what we're going to do is just start looking at some more complex radical equations. We've already done all the concepts already, um, but we're just going to look at ones that are a little bit more tough and see that uh, we're, we're confident in doing that. So say Billy was given a radical equation here, the square root of 3a plus 4 minus the square root of a plus 1 is equal to 3, and he was told to solve it. And so he solves it. Here is his work down here. I'll just move that up so you can see all of it. And he did some work here, and you know what? He made an error somewhere. And so we're going to try and find Billy's error so that we can recognize when we make an error uh, perhaps we'll be able to, when we check our work, we might be able to avoid making the same error. So let's take a look at the first one. We've got the square root of 3a plus 4 minus the square root of a plus 1 equals 3. Now we're isolating one of the radicals, so that looks like it's okay. Let's see if it, if it worked out. We had to do that by adding the square root of a plus 1 to both sides. That disappears from the left side, but is added to the right side. So it looks like this step is okay. Well, what about the next step? Let's see, we have, um, it looks like he, he's gonna square both sides, so he has a square on this left side and then the square on this right side. So that step looks like it's okay. He's followed the, the squibs um, fairly well. Uh, let's see what happens here on the left side. When you square a square root, you just end up with a radicand here, uh, 3a plus 4, so that looks all right. So that part's okay. Uh, let's take a look at this side. Well, we have a 9 plus a plus 1. Let's take a look. Well, this is a binomial that's squared. So it's going to be a binomial times another binomial. So you're going to have 3 times 3. And then you're going to have 3 times this square root of a plus 1. So I think we missed it here. I think he mistakenly... He mistakenly squared just this part and just that part, but didn't realize it's a binomial times a binomial. Let's let's show the correct work. So here's here is the error right here. It's the error right here because he failed to to correctly square this whole side. So let's actually do the correct work here, and we'll see what uh, see what happens. So I'm going to just uh, quickly do the video, and we'll explain how it goes. Okay, so we've done a little bit of, of work here. We've we've squared this side, which is a binomial times a binomial. We have 4a squared minus 24a plus 36. We have that equal to 6 squared, which is 36, and the square root of a plus 1 is squared is going to be 8 plus 1. So we continue on here. We're going to expand everything out. Then we get 4a squared minus 60a is equal to, well here this 36 and 36 cancel, so that's equal to 0. So we'll just factor a 4 out. We'll have a squared minus 15a is equal to 0, which means a squared minus 15a is equal to 0, so we can factor that again. a times a minus 15 is equal to 0, and so a can equal 0 or a can equal 15. Now let's verify these. We can say using, we can try and verify, and we can say for a equaling 0, let's try the left side. The original left side, if you notice all the way from the beginning, is the square root of 3a plus 4 minus the square root of a plus 1. So with that in mind, we have the square root of 3 times 0 plus 4 minus the square root of 0 plus 1. That's going to be the square root of 4 minus the square root of 1. That's 2 minus 1. That equals 1. Oops. And the right side here, the right side was equal to 3. So here we can see the left side does not equal the right side. So a is equaling 0 is not going to work. Well, let's verify for 
prepare 5 for a equals 15. Using that same thing, we can say left side is equal to the square root of 3 times 15 minus 4 minus the square root of 15 plus 1. We have the square root of 49, oh, plus 4, this has to be plus 4. We have the square root of 49 minus the square root of 16. We have 7 minus 4, that equals 3. And the right side here, it equal, equals 3 as well. So here we can say that the left side does equal the right side. Therefore, this A equaling 15 is the solution. So A equals 15 is the solution. And there you have it. Let's talk about example 2. When, we when the square root of 2 less than a number is subtracted from the square root of 5 more than twice a number, the result is 3. Now here this is word here we can translate that as the equal sign so something equals 3 the result equals 3. We're going to try and write a radical equation to represent this information. So here something equals 3 but let's break this other down other part down here we have the square root of 2 less than a number. So the square root of 2 less than a number will take the square root of 2 less than a number, we'll just call this number, then we'll have to call this number x, we'll say x minus 2. And then it says it is subtracted from the square root of 5 more than twice a number. 5 more than twice a number is 2x, and then 5 more is the plus 5, and the square root of that is the square root there, and it says that this square root of 2 less than a number is subtracted from the square root of 5 minus twice a number. So this is a minus sign. Now sometimes you might have to just break things down and then you might have to rearrange them depending on how you interpret the, the question. You might um, mistake something first, but then you can fix it uh, when you reread the questions. Does this make sense? Square root of 2, of two less than a number is subtracted, so it's minus that part, from the square root of 5 more than twice the number, and the result is equal to 3. So there is our radical equation. So let's solve that equation to determine the value of x. So here we'll write down that equ equation again here. We have two x plus square root of 2x plus 5 minus the square root of x minus 2. That equals 3. Now, in order to solve these radical equations, we're going to isolate one of the radicals and then do our squibs. So let's isolate this one. We'll just keep this one here. Square root of 2x plus 5. We're going to be adding this part here and adding it over here. So that's going to be 3 plus the square root of x minus 2. Now you say, what happened to it on this side? Well, the minus square root of x minus 2 plus the square root of, let me just put it in here. If we add the square root of x minus 2, that whole thing becomes 0, right? And then we're going to be adding it to this side because we want to keep this equal sign true. We want it to, to still stay equal. So we have what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So now we have this side is equal to this side. We're going to square it. And when we square it, let me just, before I actually even square, I'm, I'm just going to show that I'm squaring it. So here's 3 plus square root x minus 2 and we're going to be squaring that. So when we square this we're going to get 2x plus 5 because the square of a square root just remains that part there. And then this, remember this is, I'm just going to write it over here on the side here, this is 3 plus the square root of x minus 2 times 3 plus the square root of x minus 2. Remember, it, it's a binomial times a binomial. So when we do this, we're going to have 3 times 3, which is 9. We're going to have 3 times the square root of x minus 2. So that's 3 times x minus 2. And then we're going to have the plus x square root of x minus 2 times 3 again. Square root of x minus 2. And then the last part is going to be squared, but that is, you know, the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x minus 2 ends up being x minus 2 on its own. So we've expanded that properly now, and that we can collect like terms is 9 plus 
3 and 3 makes 6. 6 square root of x minus 2 plus x minus 2. So here we can simplify this a little bit more. I'm just going to copy that down because that's the same. So we can say then we're going to, we have this, and maybe I should put here squibs here. Remember that we squared both sides. But let's try taking a look at this. We have 2x plus 5 equals 9 plus 6 square root x minus 2 plus x minus 2. Let's try and simplify this a little bit here. So we have an x here. We have a 2x on this side. So when we subtract x here and add 2, we're going to subtract x and add 2. So we have x plus 7 is equal to, to 9 plus 6 square root of x minus 2. Okay, let's isolate this square root here. We can say uh, we can minus 9, we can minus 9, and minus 9, and we get x minus 2 is equal to 6 times the square root of x minus 2. Let's square both sides now, and we have x minus, when we have x minus 2 equals 6 times the square root of x minus 2, we can now do our, our squibs, right? We can say the square of this left side is going to be equal to the square of this right side, this whole thing here. And remember, when we square something, especially if there's a product, we're squaring each of the terms, right? And remember this radical is one term on its own. So x minus 2 squared, remember that x minus 2 squared means um, x minus 2 times x minus 2. It's a binomial times another binomial. So that is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. Hopefully at this point you're, you're a little more comfortable with uh, squaring binomials. And on this side, we have the 6 that's squared, so that's 36. And the square root of x minus 2 squared, which is going to be the just x minus 2. And you may wonder here, it's like, why didn't, is this not a binomial? Well, this is just one term. Although there's a 6 and a radical here, there's no plus or minus sign in between. This is just one term. As opposed to something like this, there was a plus sign in between, so that's a binomial, where this, this is just a monomial. Okay, so we have 36 times x minus 2, which means we can say this is 36x minus 72. We have x squared minus 4x plus 4 on this side. Let's try and combine some things here. We're going to subtract 36x on this side, subtract 36x. We get x squared minus 40x. Uh, we can also add 72 here and add 72 here. So this is plus 76. And that ends up being 0. So I did two steps at once here, but hopefully you can see I, I subtracted a 36x on both sides. And I also subtracted a set, or I added a 72 onto both sides. 72 plus 4 is 76. 72 with a minus 72 makes zero. So now we have a trinomial here that we can factor. Hopefully we can try and factor. You know, what two values will multiply to get negative 76, but add to get negative 40. So those two numbers are negative 2 and negative 38. Negative 38 plus a negative 2 is negative 40, but negative 2 times negative 38 is positive 76. So we can use the zero product law to say if this times this equals zero, that means we can solve for this, x minus 2 equals zero, which results in x, oops, not x equaling zero, x equaling the number 2, or x minus 38 can equal zero, which results in x equaling 38. Now remember that when we square both sides, we may possibly introduce a value that isn't actually right. So we always need, as a check, is to verify all these answers. So we have two things to check. We have 2x equals 2 to check, and we have x equals 38 to check. And let's 
take a look here. So I'm just going to draw a line here so that we can separate. Now we're going to verify. So let's verify x equal 2 first. So checking the left side, we have the square root of 2x plus 5 minus square root of x minus 2. And here, if we use the value of x equal 2, we get the square root of 2 times 2 plus 5 minus square root of 2 minus 2. Then we get 4 plus 5, that's square root of 9 uh, minus the square root of 0. And we get 3. And hey, the, the right side, the right side was equal to 3. So the left side equals the right side. And so that verifies that x equal to 2 is a solution. Well, what about x equal to 38? Remember, we found that x equals 38 was one of our answers, but we need to verify it. So let's verify x equals 38. Here we go. Left side is equal to the square root of 2x plus 5 minus square root of x minus 2. And that's equal to 2 times oops, square root of 2 times 38 plus 5 minus the square root of 38 minus 2. And then we say, okay, well that is the square root of 2 times 38 is 76. And 76 plus 5 is 81. And 38 minus 2 is 36. So we have the square root of 81, which is 9. The square root of 36 is 6. This is equal to 3. And the right side, when we check the right side, the right side is equal to 3. So here again, we have the left side equals the right side. And that means that verifies that x equals 38 is also an answer. So what does that tell us? Well, sometimes we may, we may be introducing an extraneous root when we square both sides. Other times, we might actually have both of those answers being valid in the solution. So we cannot tell whether we're going to have you know one answer and one extraneous root or both answers be correct or even none of them are correct until we do a verification so it's always important to verify our answers to check to see if they work in the original equation okay so you're ready for your assignment now and we will see you in class